So <clears throat> we're gonna talk about some really bad news. <clears throat> Real, a really stressful thing <clears throat> that's come up again. And then if that's not enough, like after that, we'll get to this, just the gut punch and like the implications of it, which are actually um, in the thing that's really heart wrenching about the whole thing. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? You can start. Okay. So about a year and a half ago? No, it's been two years. Two years ago, Brianna had a um, really significant condition with her eye. And we're not going to focus on the technical side so much in this video, more the personal side, but we'll touch on it some. Um, and it was a sudden loss of vision in my left eye mm -hmm. caused by my body growing blood vessels, blood vessels? Mm -hmm. behind my retina, which then those are really, they're not supposed to be there. So they're super fragile and they break and they bleed and then they cause scar tissue eventually if it's not dealt with. And it's uh, con it's this condition that's very similar. If I, my memory serves me to macular degeneration, right? Yeah, well, the treatment's the same. It's a very similar etiology, um, and the treatment is the same. And so what, what came of that was this pretty extended course of you getting shots directly into your eyeball. Yeah, with this medication, and it, the medication stops the growth of the blood vessels. That's its job. And it worked. <clears throat> it worked. Um, you had a series of shots over months. It's a nasty med. You couldn't get pregnant when you were on the med. We were sternly warned about that. Um, and we didn't. We, um, and then the last time you saw those doctors, after that course, the doctor did an eye exam and said, this condition has totally resolved. You don't need any more shots, which was kind of semi-miraculous. We were like, wow, that's amazing. And then since then, you haven't had symptoms. No. Your eye's been great. And we were looking at this, I don't know, kind of as a miracle. It's at least something to be really thankful for. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a miracle. I mean... The treatment worked, the and treatment it worked really well, yeah. which doesn't, quickly. isn't always the case. Um, part of the, the backstory on this, and I think even though we haven't talked about it much, it's probably been in the back of both of our minds. Um, definitely mine is that. This eye condition, they don't really understand what causes it, but to the, their best understanding, which is very limited, the thing that can contribute to it the most is stress and then and um increased cortisol levels yeah, yeah. as a result of stress yes. and so through the past six months i think we've just kind of i'm sure you have had in your mind like hey like we can't stop the stress and like that, it would be nice if we could, but we can't turn the stress off. Um, and so here we are on the backside of probably the most stressful six months of our lives. Two years. It's been two years of nothing to stop But it's, it's, come, it's been a crescendo. Yeah. The past six months have just been like incredibly stressful. Some of which we've shared, a lot of which we haven't. It's just been overwhelming, like one thing after another after another. Here we are, and Bree's eye, about a week ago, started doing exactly the same thing as it, was, it did originally. It was two, year ago, two years ago on Christmas Day that I lost my vision. I was at your parents' house. You were at work. And throughout the day, I stopped being able to see, and I thought, I left early. Because I was like, I should drive home before I get started. I can't yep. see out of my eye. Um... <clears throat> So that's interesting. This started about a week before Christmas this time. And they wanted to see me right away, but um, like last Wednesday. So they wanted to see me like the Wednesday before Christmas Day. Um, but I needed to do some research on the medication first. So what are the symptoms that you're having right now or have been having? Um, it's a flashing light. 
uh, which can be a lot of things with your eye. Mm -hmm. But this is very, for me, this is what began it last time. Um, it's a, it's this, it's like a strobe light in my eye. Mm -hmm. And then um, my vision starts to get hazy and blurry and it gets progressively worse. So. Is it as bad as it was two years ago? It isn't yet. But it's gotten worse and worse over the past week? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing with the condition, and we are currently assuming that's what it is, is because the symptoms are the same and also it can be something that reoccurs in an individual. So it's very likely this it's exactly the same thing and will require exactly the same treatment. Um, the, the condition, the challenge with the condition is that it is progressive and it does lead to total vision loss like as it progresses like that's mm -hmm. the um that's the prognosis on the bad side the last time i did get to where i had no central vision like if i closed this eye i could not see out of this eye hey what you doing <clears throat> um close, your eyes. close my eyes okay Mama's eyes are closed. What are you hiding? I don't want to close my eyes. Are you hiding something? Or are you just being fun? He's just I'm being fun. Hiding a, a real froggy is, is dead. A real froggy that's dead. <laughs> I'm going to come check it out. If I closed this eye, I could not see anything out of this eye straight on. I, could, I had some peripheral vision, but not much. And it was so debilitating the first few weeks. Um, I lost my depth perception. I couldn't drive. It was difficult to even walk because I would just trip. I couldn't pick a pin off of a table. I adjusted to it, to where I could drive and stuff, but the first couple of weeks were very debilitating. So I'm really glad that I'm not at that point yet and that I was able to enjoy Christmas without being debilitated. I was driving that, last night. You it was were fine. driving in the dark. It wasn't too bad. Mm -mm. It wasn't bad at all. Um, because I, it's just the upper left-hand corner right now. That's gray and fuzzy. It's not my whole eye. Are you able to see the same doctor tomorrow? Mm -hmm. you, okay. So. I would have had to wait another few weeks because he's on vacation. But it's, just, <clears throat> it's a doctor in his office. Um, so. Here's the part of this that's just gut-wrenching. And really, really. I mean, that's. Well, I want to say one thing. That's enough, right? Yeah, that's enough in and of itself that it's back. However, I mean, I feel very hopeful knowing that there's a treatment. Like last you time. Look at it. Isn't it soft? Is that your froggy? Let me see it. Oh, hi, froggy. Should I kiss it? This time hasn't been as scary to me as the first time because I've already experienced it and I've experienced the healing, you know? So I'm very hopeful. Whereas last time I was just scared. Mm -hmm. And I had complete vision loss. Mm -hmm. It was really, uh, it was really scary so um this time I don't have complete vision loss yet and I have a lot of hope but because I've been through this before and it healed my eye I mean healed you know it treated it I don't know about healed it but um it did treat the condition and so it's scary in the sense that like what if it doesn't work or the shots are really painful I mean they're not fun at all does knowing what the shots are like help or does it not because it's so bad? Because there was that fear of the unknown last time. Wait, you have to give me shots in my eye? No, Mama. What is it? It's candy. Oh, it's candy. Thanks. You want jelly bean? Um, I don't know. I think the, I think for me, geisha my eye is kind of terrifying, but I just ignore it. And then when I get there, I do it. But who knows? I mean, who knows what they're going to say tomorrow? I don't know what they're going to say. But I'm pretty sure they're gonna say you need this shot again. And you'll get it tomorrow. It'll yeah. be like, you'll be, because what's, what they're doing, because we didn't have this appointment a long time ahead, it was kind of just fit in because they schedule so far out. Yeah, it would have been the end of February before I could have gotten in for a non-emergency appointment. They schedule so far out, yeah, that you're just getting squeezed in. So what it's gonna look like is you're gonna go in tomorrow you're going to get checked in. You're going to do your eye exam. You're going to do multiple tests and exams for your eye. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. It's going to be like a whole day appointment. And then at some point 
after they figure out your diagnosis officially, they'll you'll be sitting there for probably hours, and then they'll squeeze you in between other He's appointments. Naked. Okay, where were we at? <laughs> um, naked toddler. We had to go take care of that. <laughs> so, you were saying that this time you're not as afraid. Um, you've been through it before. And we were saying how your appointment's going to run tomorrow. It'll be an all-day affair. And you're actually having a friend go with you, right? Yeah, she's taking me so you can stay with the babies because I don't Can really... she sit with you inside? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if I can go inside. Because oh. last year when I went in for the OSTO appointment for 2020, I just sit in the car, I remember. So... <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because we have seven kids and we keep getting interrupted. Well, we, I don't want to ignore them, but... I, it's anyway. just funny. <laughs> so we're jumping off and it's real talking life. to them. Um, really, it's real life. Really, the gut-wrenching piece of this. Um, after kind of letting that settle back in, this diagnosis that, I don't know, Makes me feel old. Not that it's conditioned. My condition isn't. I know. It still does, though. <laughs> it still does. <laughs> um, then the gut wrenching part is that if um, you have, to, if it is the same condition, which most likely it is, and you have to take this med, and there's not really another great option, and you can't breastfeed. And not even, not, I mean, they can't have my milk at all. Mm -hmm. It's not like I could pump and give it to them. It's just, I can't. And the, the backstory there is just that, you know, after these are two, two lovely little twins who are sleeping upstairs, by the way. Uh, is the monitor's on. It's Grace is up there. Okay. Um, after they went through what we see as actually a very traumatic first several months of their life and isolated, relatively isolated compared to most babies' experience and definitely most of our babies' experiences. Um, breastfeeding has been this point of reconnection and it's been this sweet, sweet thing for them as it is for all babies um, who breastfeed. And so, and I know it's been really meaningful to you too, because you didn't even think they were going to be able to. Yeah. And then they did. Well, not just that. I mean, I worked really hard to keep my milk supply up long enough with a pump. I mean, I feel like what I did is nothing short of miraculous in a way that I had an extremely trauma traumatizing C-section. Mm -hmm and lost my uterus and literally immediately, and lots of women do this, but I think it's amazing. Immediately started pumping every two hours mm -hmm. while healing from all of that physically, while visiting the babies in the NICU for eight hours a day, driving two hours a day, while taking care of my other children on some level, mostly other people were taking care of their physical needs, while keeping my milk supply up while, I mean, I just, I just feel like I fought so hard for it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I fought so hard to get them to nurse, which I really believed was the best thing for them. Um, especially like the connection, but also it being winter, I feel like they really need breast milk from their mother, um, as preemies especially, to keep them from getting so sick in the winter. Um, I'm pretty devastated. Yeah. It's difficult being this transparent on YouTube because people are so cruel, but to be honest, I just, I'm just like, when is this season of our life gonna be over? I'm trying so hard to focus on our gifts because there are many. Yeah. But it's getting really, really, really hard for me to stay positive. 
and to not be overcome by cynicism and anger. Okay, it's not a big deal. I'm just struggling really hard not to have a really hard heart and to keep my heart soft. When I, when I just think about who I used to be, I feel like I just used to be this really positive, soft-hearted, happy, uplifting person, and I just don't know who that person is anymore. I'm just really struggling. People on YouTube can also be very kind and encouraging. Oh, you're a sweet girl. You're very kind and encouraging. One of my greatest gifts right here. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. My joyful girl. Babies. Oh, it was just Grace. Thanks, right? Grace, for watching the babies. You see their matching little outfits? Here comes the superstars of the show. <laughs> oh. This fat little... 14 pounder. Huge, huge man. Mm. And truly, he's still growing appropriately, but a little bit slower than her brother. She's just herself, honey. I know. She eats and she poops and she does all her stuff. And she's growing. And she grows every day. She's doing all the things she's supposed to do. She's just little. He just, well, he's, he Big. has surpassed other babies in his <laughs> age. He just keeps getting bigger and bigger. He's my dream boat. Mm -hmm. Are you my heartthrob? Are you my heartthrob? Uh -oh. Where's he at? Is he hungry? He's probably getting hungry soon. That is the really hard part about this is none of it is easy. I keep saying that's the hard part. That's like the extra little gut punch though. If it wasn't like the eye thing is hard enough, but that the eye thing is like, it's, and it's not happening to me. So I shouldn't maybe talk too much, but it's, it is like you just push through that and deal with it. Right. Yeah. But the not being, the baby's not being breastfed. It just feels like a really, big impact on them and a loss for them because they would have that connection for almost another year. Yeah, I mean, for, I would nurse them as long as they wanted to, which for some of my kids, that was <laughs> longer than others. It was always at least a year, though. And it's just the, it's like... 15 months, actually, I think was the shortest I ever nursed. It just feels like, it's one of their biggest comforts, basically. And it just feels like, why is that being taken away? So. Yeah, I mean, the nurse talked to the doctor on, when I was on the phone with her, and she said, yeah, he won't even treat me if I'm nursing. Um, so. And we don't really. I mean, my, I don't, the options are lose, like totally lose my vision in my left eye, or give up nursing. Um, because I will totally lose my vision in my left eye. It's not a if, it's a when. Um, because what happens is, is if you don't treat it, the blood vessels keep breaking and then it causes scar tissue behind your eye and it's permanent eye damage. And I actually have some of that. Um, I do have distorted vision from the first time. Uh, so it wasn't much though. It was, it was something I hardly noticed unless I really tried to see it. So it wasn't a big deal. I mean, to me, that's a, that's a choice. That's an easy choice, right? I mean, it's not. No, it's not easy. I've considered giving up my vision so that I can breastfeed them. It's that important. Yeah. But then what happens if I lose vision in my other eye? So that's yeah. the problem. Is I need both. I need two in case one goes. Yeah. And they can thrive on formula, but. It's just very devastating. I'm just tired of my life being so dramatic. I'm tired of. I just. I want my simple, sweet life back that's just. I guess that's naive. I'm just really struggling right now. I'm struggling right now with like just manning up and being strong and and keeping my mind focused on what is good and lovely 
and being overcome by thing after thing. And I feel a lot of guilt for that. I feel a lot of guilt that I'm not just... I'm just broken down. That's how I feel. I feel very broken down. And then I feel guilty for being broken down. Like I should be stronger. And I just, I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to act like I'm a victim. But I'm also just really tired of things being hard. And I try every day actually to like list. I feel like the mind can be like a battleground sometimes. And it has been for me lately. That's part of the reason I wanted to start polar plunging again because I think it really strengthens the mind. And um, but I've also just been trying to list like all my blessings every day. The reason we share this stuff honestly is because, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm not really I'm not going to answer those kind of nasty people who just say stupid stuff and tell you not to be emotional. There's plenty of them, but yeah. the two people who are like, why are they sharing so much personal detail? It's like, here, here's the thing. Like w this YouTube channel has been a huge part of our life and we're sharing these little stories about our family. And what I know is that many of you guys actually have really hard things in your life as well. And so I do think it's, it has been brought to our attention that many people have been really encouraged by our channel. And I really do believe that, honestly, like the way people will benefit from our story is seeing some of the harder side and not just seeing the cute and fun side. Um, and I actually don't like sharing it. He encourages me too. <laughs> He's more open than me. I'm just not a very open, like I am an open person, but I'm not a super vulnerable person, like to the masses, only with super trusted people. And so, yeah, but you this could is have hard said, for me. You could have said, no, I don't want to shoot that video. Oh yeah, I know it's that. It's not like I'm making you do. I know that, I know. And I do say that many times. Um, I mean, most of our Nikki videos are not very vulnerable. <laughs> because I, there's just no way I can handle being vulnerable to the masses during all that. Not that we weren't, but I just, honestly, it was so much worse than we ever shared. Um, so. Here's a positive note to yeah, end on. Right Here's a positive note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> you're so beautiful. You're a positive note, and you're a positive note. Twins. We still look at them every day and say, we have to. Like every day I look at them and think, wow, we have two, two babies. And I love them both. It's kind of like eating two full-size chocolate bars. It's Except like, who would have thought that? Who would have had that idea? Like, let's eat one and then we'll eat another one. Let me oh nurse them. Goodness. I'll nurse them. I mostly didn't think about this stuff. I was just trying to get through Christmas with the kids and keep it really positive and um, now that Christmas has passed, I feel like I can get kind of upset about what's going on. Yeah, we didn't talk about it at all mm -mm. through Christmas. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to keep things fun and and light for our kids to enjoy their Christmas. It's just like grief after grief after, I can't even like process one grief before a new one comes. And then there's been a lot of things, you know, you guys, we actually don't share everything and there's been there's just a lot of things the last year that we haven't shared and they've been very, very hard. Grief after grief. And, um, it, 
guy. And to be honest, sometimes I wonder, like, how do you just keep? How do people keep going? And I think they, I think they don't. I think people get really hard-hearted and broken down and bitter and angry. And that's what I've been struggling with that majorly. Many days even succumbing to it. And I look back at old videos and I like see this like light-hearted, sweet, very soft-hearted woman not that I hadn't gone through things I had they just weren't so close together <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean I've been through hard things in life before the last two years but I had time to process them and heal from them before the next one came so the other really hard thing is like staying like uh, staying I mean on some level you have to hide this stuff from your kids because you need to stay positive for them and stay functioning and um, you know keep taking care of them and moving forward and that's been challenging I've been really struggling with that you know I don't think crying in front of your kids is wrong or anything but I mean I want to end on a positive note it's really difficult while I'm nursing him <laughs> thinking like it's the last day I'll probably get to nurse my babies. Yep. I mean, it, we don't 100% know. It could be another diagnosis. We could, they could, could say that's not the treatment. They could say, they could say, this is something we can't treat. It's some different thing. You're going to lose your vision, and then your decision's made for you. Well, then I'm going blind, so it's <laughs> like, great! That's my positive <laughs> note. <laughs> that's, maybe it's not something they can treat. <laughs> I don't know. If y'all could just pray for us, I think we're both just really tired. And I hate sounding weak, and I hate sounding like a victim. I really don't like that. But we can really, really use your prayers for our minds and our hearts I think we're just weary I agree with that even though we know we are so blessed we know we know we see it but at the same time there's just been a lot of hard knocks and we're just really tired to say I laugh all day long at the same time that I'm crying <laughs> okay I'll see you in a video soon bye